ready? Green, green, green. These drivers put on a great show on every type of track. Driving these cars, banging off of each other. Now, oh, he gets sideways, he's off the racetrack. There he goes, trying to make the pass. If you're a driver trying to get in, you get little opportunities like that. Watch how hard these guys are gonna drive. Checkered flag in the air. Checkered flag there, champion. Road racing in the Napa Valley coming your way today. It's the Carneros 200. Hi, everybody. Ray Dunlap along with Phil Parsons. Bernadette Santacola will be along here shortly. We are ready to go for race number six of 2013. This is a 15 race schedule for the NASCAR K&M Pro Series West. Beautiful day here. 84 clear, not a cloud in the sky. And here's a look at the points, Phil. One back from Derek Thorne to Michael Self. That's pretty tight. And Cameron Haley's third in the points. He's our pole sitter, and he's standing by with Bernadette. Thanks, guys. Well, in most of our races, if you grab the pole, you're grabbing the checkered flag. That's not the case at Sonoma. But with that said, what is it here to win? Strategy? Uh, yeah, a lot of strategy. We uh, This track doesn't have a whole lot of grip at it, and these rear tires are really falling off really quick. So we just really need to go out there, conserve a lot of tires here at the beginning, make sure we have a good fuel stop, get us some good track position, and uh, go out there and get that win. Everyone seems to want to win at Sonoma. What is it about this track that makes it such a big accomplishment? I think it, it's just how tough this place really is. I mean, uh, the hills, the turns, they're all the hardest turns that, I mean, the West, West Series goes to. So it's definitely tough, and it just gives you that extra incentive to go out and win the race. Good luck. Cameron Haley on the pole here today. Thank you, Bernadette. What's it going to take from your viewpoint to win today, Phil? Ray, I think you want to pit early. I think you want to get in, get your fuel, cannot change tires, get it done quick so you can have track position, and then save those brakes. This racetrack, extremely difficult on brakes, and manage those tires. We talked, heard Cameron Haley talk about those rear tires being burned off the car. You want to make sure you have something for the end. A 1.99-mile road course, and as the fans are piling in, a lot of them have some questions for these drivers, and that brings up Ask Bernadette. All right, race fans, remember, if you have a question for a driver, tweet me at Bernie Sports, and I'll get it answered at the next race. Our first question goes to Michael Self. After winning three in a row, do you feel like you have a target on your back? Uh, it's tough to say, you know. It always seems like in this series, the more someone wins, the more they're hated. So um, we try and stay clean, put some good races together. I know the series gets controversial at times, but you just kind of got to blow that off. And if they've, if they've got a grudge, then they've got a grudge. You know, just go out and race them the same way. <laughs> you see Derek Thorne waving in the background. Maybe, maybe he's talking about Derek Thorne. Kind of hard to say. The Carneros 200's coming your way. We'll take a look at our starting lineup for a big field in the K&N West. 35 cars on the grid today as we get ready for the Carneros 200. We see a good start for Gene Price Motorsports up on the front row today. Yeah, actually five out of six poles for the 2013 season for Gene Price Motorsports. Phil, it's always fun to look at the starting lineup when we come road course racing. A lot of names you're not used to see, and welcome back to Polly Haraka. He'll roll off fourth today. Great qualifying effort for Dylan Lupton. Yeah, certainly was. Chris Cook, a former Bondurant instructor, qualifying up in the top ten. There's Dale Quarterly. He's a winner on the road course back in the East Series. He made the trip out here out west. Little surprise to see Jim Engelbright that far back. Usually really good at this track. He'll roll off 22nd today. And as we look back through the field, check out where your favorite drivers are. You see car number 25 there. A year ago, that car was in victory lane here with David Gilliland behind the wheel. They're coming off a of turn number 11. The field is lined up two by two, ready to go. Cameron Haley on the pole tonight, and here they come. Green flag is in the air. We're underway at Sonoma. Great start by Cameron Haley. Got a little kink, a little turn one is a little left-hander, but the top of the hills where you want to be on the inside, and Greg Persley is. Greg Persley in the number 26 to the inside, but looks like Haley got the initial jump, and he will go to the lead as they go through four and five. See, David Mayhew stuck to the outside of the 16 of Eric Holmes. We'll definitely have to look at our numerical here some, Phil, because a couple of drivers in this field you're not used to seeing. But when we go road course racing, there's always those handful of guys who come out and say, man, I want to play. And uh, we've got a group of them. They're side by side right there. Dylan Lupton in the 9 and Eric Holmes in the 16. What's Mayhew going to do today, Bernadette? All right, guys, another important factor here to winning at Sonoma is tire management. I was talking to David Mayhew in the 17 car, and he told me it's really important to not try too hard until everyone's made their fuel stop. 
So expect him to be hanging in the back and then start to work his way back up to the front after he makes his fuel stop. What's your window here, Phil? When would you come in if your crew chief call in this race? Most of the guys in the garage are said they could go somewhere between 40 and 44 laps. So that stands to reason about 20 laps. But if you want to have a little bit of insurance in the event of a green white checker, I think I would wait till maybe 22, something like that. This is a 64 lap race. You know, I was looking back through the stats and I saw a race where there were 12 lead changes, but I didn't realize that was back when this was a 300 miler. That was a 75 lap race, a little bit different. Yeah, certainly is. And again, no tire changing here. These guys will have to stop for fuel and they will be live pit stops. There's going to be no halftime break, but no tire changing. See the 20 car there rolling down. That is Polly Haraka and Michael Self right behind him. What a end of May and beginning of June it was for Michael Self. That guy was on a tear. Goes out and wins at Iowa. He gets a big victory at Lebanon I-44 and uh, also had picked up a road course win at Brainerd, so he was really on a roll. Yeah, he's coming in here looking for four in a row. Great side-by-side -side battle, battle there for a moment with Pauly Hiraka. Pauly's good on the road course here. Pauly ran second in this race a couple years ago. We have no former winners of this race in the field here. Well, that leaves a new guy in victory lane with a trophy, which would get a picture at the end of the day. That's pretty cool. I know Michael Self wants to put his name on that trophy. Already a winner this year at Brainerd on the road course. Here goes Self down to the inside. He's going to make a move on Haraka. Turn number 11. He gets his right sides right on that rumble strip and give him the spot. That's how to do it. That's a textbook move here at Sonoma. That is the best place to pass going in turn 11. See Golden Gate meets on the hood of that number 21. Bay Biodiesel on the side. And there goes a spot for Michael Self. He'll go by Haraka picks up the fourth position. Yeah, I was talking to Steve Portengay in the garage area, and I said, what an amazing year you guys have had. He said, it just seems like everything starts to click. You know, last year, they showed some tremendous flashes of brilliance. They won three races last year, and they were set up well for this season, and boy, they've been on fire. Boy, Phil, this is a great shot here just to show you the kind of elevation changes they have at this racetrack. As a driver, this has got to be a ball. It really is. Now, this is a true road course. Watkins Glen, as we watch Cameron Haley go through the S's, Watkins Glen is, is, a, is a road course as well, but it's a lot faster road course than, than this racetrack at Sonoma. But a lot of twisting turns here, a lot of hard braking at this racetrack. Definitely plays hard on the equipment, for sure. You know, it's so interesting, Phil. We look back at our last race that you and I covered at Lebanon I-44. 16 cars there, and today you come in this race with 35 entries. You've got to finish this race no matter what if you want to hang in the points. Yeah, this race can really kill you. If you have a bad finish, you have some mechanical trouble getting involved in an accident, finish down in the 30s, and one of your point competitors fin finishes up front, you could lose 30 points here. And in a short 15-race season, it's hard to overcome a 30-point deficit. And here, you can be running in the top five and have a problem on the last lap and finish in the 30s. Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, usually usually uh, not very much attrition here. Obviously, already we talk about attrition. There's a 19 car slowing on the racetrack. Kyle Heckman with a problem. Looks like he is not under power. Looked like that was right at the exit to pit road. See the exit? That's the exit of turn four. They just came off of turn four. This is turn seven here. Another pretty good passing zone, and the caution is out for Kyle Heckman. I'm sure David Mayhew is going to be on the radio saying, what's going on with that 19 car? So he's just going to back into that part of the elevation you were talking about. That's uphill from the start-finish line all the way to the top of the hill, turn two. So Kyle Heckman uh, not under power, and the full-course yellow will come out here in the Carneros 200. Looks like he's uh, made a little contact there with uh, one of the orange cones. We'll hear about that on Twitter, I'm sure. Kinds of stuff when you come out here to Napa Valley. I love the big shopping cart. Man, do you see the motor in that thing? <laughs> Ought to be in a drag race car. Green flag is back out, and here we go. See you this time whether Haley or Greg Persley gets the preferred position when they get down there to turn number two and three. Boy, per Persley hung in there and threw turn one on the outside. They make a little contact. Robin and bumping in row number one. Haley in the maroon colored car. The bright yellow is Persley, and Persley's going to try to cut him off. Well, I tell you, I wouldn't. I sure wouldn't think that those guys look like teammates as hard as they're racing here. Only 10 laps into this race. It's kind of been like that all season. Those two cars have been at the front a lot and a good bit of contact, especially when we're on the short tracks. 
See, David Mayhew looks down to the inside, not able to do anything this time. You see the bright orange number 17 of Mayhew. He was looking at the nine of Lupton. I know how desperately Greg Persley would love to get a win here at Sonoma. Really, all you talk about all the veterans, Ray, of this series, like Persley and Holmes, how much they feel like they would love to get a win at Sonoma to put the, on their resume. Holmes was telling me this is the one of the biggest deals that's missing from his resume. That you know, and they've run so well. Remember last year they they had an engine failure after he had uh, stretched out a big lead at this racetrack. So I know that is a big deal for Holmes. These guys really tighten up through corner number 11, come back to the flag stand. And Persley now has about a two-car length lead over his teammate. Yeah, Persley's opened it up a little bit. And once he fought off the 24-car Haley on the restart, Michael Self right there on the back bumper of Haley. Derek Thorne hanging right there in the top five also. Outstanding season for Derek Thorne this year. Five races. Five top five finishes. Those are pretty good numbers. That'll keep you in the hunt. And you know, Phil, we've got a lot of racing to go. So I I, I hate to talk about points too much because we're so uh, in the early stages of this season. But there really are four or five drivers that have looked to me like they've put themselves in position in the early part of this year to be a contender for the championship. And we've already mentioned many of those names. Good side-by-side -side battle coming here. You see the Federated car coming there, trying to take a look to the inside. Engelbright said, I'd like to have that spot. He's trying to get by Giles Thornton in the 12 car. You know, Jim Engelbright always runs well here at this racetrack. He's a winner at Portland on the road course. We've got a car off the racetrack. We've it's got, Thornton. Yeah, we've got trouble right there through and in, in, into the tire barriers. The number 12 car looks like he's got left side damage. We saw him racing with the one of Jim Engelbright. Don't know if there was any contact or not. See a little bit of left rear damage. I read this week that Giles and his mentor, Rick Crawford, are going to go race in Europe. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Giles has uh, made a little bit of noise here this season. Been competing week in, week out. Yeah, youngster from Montana. We stay green right now. The officials will give him plenty of time to get that car right and back on the racetrack. This racetrack is almost two miles around, as you mentioned, so it'll be a long time before they get back to him. I would say Giles is going to have to go to the pit area, though, by the looks of the left side contact, especially back by the spoiler when he hit that tire barrier. So if he does get it rolling again, and there we see the local yellow coming out. He is not yet refired. Yeah, that's going to be going to bring out a full course yellow for for the series. A little bit of fuel burning off out of the tailpipes there, but uh, Giles obviously trying to crank this thing. So we're under caution for the second time today here at Sonoma. Let's take a look back, Phil. We saw him running with Engelbright. Let's see if there's any contact. And there is right there. Jim gets in the back of him just a little bit, just enough to get him off the racetrack. Now Jim can't get away from him and pushes him on around. Looks like he had scrubbed off enough speed by that point that the damage might not have been too bad, but they'll try to get him to the pits. Caution number two so far here. We're watching the K&M Pro Series West from Sonoma. Welcome back to Wine Country. We rejoin our race at lap 31 of 64. While we were away for break, Phil, most of the front-running cars has gone to the pits. They've had an opportunity to get that fuel. My question is, though, how tight are they on that window? Most of the guys said they could go around 40, you know, 40, 42 laps. So a lot of them pitted around lap 20. They should be good to go to the end, but they, uh, they may have to worry a little bit about multiple green-white checkers. We certainly always have to have that in your mind about the possibility of extending this race. Two cars go around. We see Thornton and Carlos Vieira. Those two race cars have spun, but it looks like both of them are going to be able to continue. Yeah, just a brief local yellow there. The field will stay under green. And Phil, I should mention that uh, when we went to break, Greg Persley was the leader of this race, but after our first round of pit stops, uh, Persley lost a lead, and I think currently he's running in seventh, it looks like. See Dylan Lupt in the ninth car. He has a little bit of damage on the front of that car, and he's just on the tail end of the lead lap here. There's our leader, Cameron Haley, right behind the nine of Lupton. Haley, of course, comes from Canada. Cabinets by Haley, the sponsorship on uh, the hood of that race car, and he has had a pretty spirited battle up here with Michael Self. Those two guys have... Uh, have really been about equal lap times. Yeah, they certainly have. They've been together even before the pit stop. These guys were running together. And now they're back together on the racetrack. Lupton is able to stay out in front of those guys. 
This is this is the most recent restart. You see Michael Self on the inside. He actually runs through the grass a little bit, Ooh. slides up in the Haley. Cameron does a great job regaining control of that car. Did you notice the black marks, especially behind the left rear wheel on that number 21? That could be a concern. Right now they're staying right together again as they exit turn 11. Well, let's get an update on strategies in today's race. What are you seeing from the pit area, Bernadette? All right, guys, I talked to Michael Self earlier before the race, and he said he expects the 26 and 24 cars to be fast. He said the place to beat them is on the restarts. So his strategy is all restarts to get ahead and then stay ahead until the end. Makes pretty good sense. If you get that, uh, get a good jump on the restart, you can gain some positions, but it didn't uh, didn't work out the last time. You just about turned him around, though. That yeah. would have worked. That would have really gave him some track position. See, Dylan Lupton would love to stay in front of these guys and catch a caution flag, catch a full course yellow would allow him to drive all the way back around and gain almost two miles on the racetrack. Lupton's been able to hang right there in the top five in the points throughout the course of this season, and uh, Certainly staying on the lead lap or getting back up there to be in contention in this one could make a big difference for him. Yeah, you talked earlier, Ray, about as we see a slow car on the racetrack about how many cars finish this race. I mean, there's a number of cars that will be on the lead lap in this race. So right now, the worst thing that could happen to Dylan Lumpton is to get a lap down. Absolutely. And as you said, he does have some damage to the right front of that Vadio race car. Right now he's, ooh, Michael Sub makes a run to the inside. Here comes Self. He's going to do that patented move. Right side tires on the blue and yellow line. Looks like he's going to go past Haley in turn number 11. Got to remember now, you have to save your stuff. We have a long way to go here. We're just past halfway in this race. These two have been battling like it's the last couple of laps of this race. And Haley hanging right there with him. He says, one little mistake, buddy, and I'm going to get that spot back. Michael Self comes in here with three wins in a row. Cameron Haley has not won a points race yet. Won that big battle at the beach at Daytona, but does not have a point win yet. Nice to have a trophy that says I won at Daytona, but Haley certainly hanging right there week in, week out, trying to put himself in position to win. You know, if you're not a, a regular watcher of this K&N Pro Series West, you need to know that Cameron Haley's driving for the team that won the championship a year ago with Dylan Kwasniewski behind the wheel. Three big wins back to back this season for Michael Self has certainly put him on the racing radar all the way around. I don't uh, spend a lot of time in the NASCAR Spring Cup Series garage. I've heard a number of folks talking about this young man, so it's always nice when you get to victory lane and get a few eyes on you. Giles Thornton is around again. Right in front of David Mayhew, the 17 car really had to slow David. I think we're going to stay green. Giles gets it going. Kyle said, I'm not too sure about this Sonoma road course race today, but uh, he's had a bit of difficulty. Michael Self's opened up about a half a dozen car link lead right now on the 24 of Cameron Haley. Ray, we're inside 20 laps to go here. Carl Haar right there in the number two car will move over a good bit and give room to the front runners in this race, and he's going to let Haley slide on by right at the start finish line. Yeah, Carl has some pretty serious issues, looks like. His car. There's a replay of Thornton. He just got in turn seven just a little bit too hard, lost the back end right in front of the nine of Lupton. Bobby Runyon Jr. had a pretty good view of that spin, too. Luckily, he was not involved. Good battle for the fourth spot. Paulie Haraka, the 20, has it. There's David Mayhew, the 17 car, right now running fifth. Haraka came out here with uh, designs to be competitive in, uh, in this race, also in the Sprint Cup Series race here at Sonoma. Yeah, he's going to make his Sprint Cup debut uh, while he's out here at Sonoma, so good to get a, get a little bit of extra track time here. Worked out a situation here with Bill McAnally, which was his former owner in the West Series, and heavy, heavy traffic here at the exit of turn four. Runyon gets run to the high side. These guys all trying to look for that preferred line down on the bottom. Mayhew right there, and he has got a lot of pressure behind him from the 25 of Tom Clower. Yeah, Tom Clower, a road racer by trade, doing a nice job here. Anytime you can run pretty close to David Mayhew on a road course or any type of racetrack out here in the <laughs> West, you're doing pretty good. 
You know, Phil, it's interesting when you look back through the record books for this race in the late part of the 80s and the early part of the 90s, you see a bunch of Sprint Cup regulars. You had Rusty Wallace winning this race. You had uh, Ernie Irvin winning this race. Those guys were trying to figure out how to go road racing because back in the day the, in the Sprint Cup deal, it wasn't that big. But today, this, this is a very diverse field of young drivers here. A lot of guys with expertise in this, and then you have mix in your series regulars. It makes for a really nice balance as we see Johnny Borneman having trouble. His number eight car has come to a stop. Yeah, that's probably going to bring out a caution flag here as you see David Mayhew doing his best to try to get by that 20 of Paul Hiraka. Caution is out on the racetrack. Full course yellow here. Yellow flag out once again, and that will give Cameron Haley another shot to take a look at Michael Self. Those guys have been having great battles on the restarts. Remember that previous restart when Michael Self got his right sides off in the dirt and made contact with Cameron Haley. I think this will allow the nine of Dylan Lupton to stay on the lead lap. Each and every one of these cautions giving these guys a little bit of an opportunity to conserve from some fuel we think we might be tight on the window. Twisted X boots on the side of Borneman's car. He's going to need a wrecker, so we'll take another short commercial break. <laughs> Laps to go. It's Self and Haley on the front row. Get ready. The green flag is back out. Here we go. It'll be a battle down into turns one and two. And look, here comes Derek Thorne going to try to get in there in car number six. A bad restart by the 24 of Cameron Haley. He was up at the front row there, lost two, three spots. Now he's trying to fight back to the inside of the six of Thorne. Not going to get there. Now Eric Holmes goes wide. Thorne gets inside of him. And here comes Haley back. Holmes is going to lose two spots in one corner. Good battle back here. Engelbright side by side. There's five or six cars in a gaggle. Derek Thorne has that spot now over Cameron Haley. Ooh, car off the racetrack. That may be Runyon up there at the top of seven. See if he can get that car refired. It'll be about a, over a minute before these guys get back over there. Eric Holmes now all over the back of Cameron Haley. Eric's up to the fourth spot. One car we haven't noticed, Ray, during the break, Bernadette reported that there were uh, some issues with the 26 car of Pursley. They actually came down pit road, raised the hood with suspected carburetor or fuel pump issues. Pursley started second today and obviously right in the middle of this points battle, so we'll keep an eye on that race car. You were talking about Holmesville. How about five top five finishes and seven starts at this racetrack? His number's pretty good when it comes to Sonoma. But as he said, the win would mean everything to him. He's been here, I think, to almost every race they've had here in the KM Pro Series West. Yeah, that zero in the win column really gets to him and always so good here. He has another shot at it today. We're talking about the Napa race car right there in your screen. He's coming up to put some pressure on Cameron Haley. As you said, Haley did not do a good restart, and that dropped him back a couple of spots. Thorne has gotten by him. There's Greg Persley now, Michael Self driving by Greg Persley. Greg came back on the racetrack. You can see continuing to have issues for that 26 car. Ray, we talked about how you don't want to have trouble here, how it could really hurt you in the points. It's going to kill Greg Persley in the points. And whatever they have done to that car, Phil, apparently has not fixed it because he is certainly not at full song. They have certainly fixed this six car, though. Derek Thorne is all over the back of Michael Self right now. Remember when we saw Ask Bernadette at the top of the show, Thorne was back there waving behind him? That's right where he is on the racetrack, too. He had a bit of a twinkle in his eye there, didn't he? <laughs> I think he did. That's the Sunrise Ford right there for Derek Thorne. Thorne, of course, picked up the victory earlier this season at Stockton 99 Speedway, a two-time winner from a year ago, and he's going to try to do that patented move. He had his almost entire car on the rumble strips there, but not able to pick up any time on self. We're rapidly approaching almost 10 laps to go. We have 12 laps to go now. You know, there's only two or three really good spots to pass at this racetrack. Going in turn four, going in turn seven, and, and then going in turn 11. Turn 11 by far being the best opportunity to pass. But Derek Thorne would love to stay in position here, stay right on that 21 car, and try to make a move at one of those spots. I thought we might see Austin Cameron up here in the front of this running order today. A little bit surprised. Austin running back in mid-pack right now. He's usually pretty good on this 
Racetrack, and oh boy, did Thorne really get it sideways that time. And here he comes, he's gonna try to make a move on self. Pressure on the inside, he's up on the rumble strips. Those two cars, little bit of contact, and Derek Thorne is around the 21. How about Derek Thorne? He makes the move in turn number seven. Now he's got it through the S's. Pretty much single foul through the S's here. He's already opened up about five car lengths. And here comes Haley. Haley said, I'm not done yet, Michael Self. He's right on the back bumper of that black number 21. It seems like the 21 of Self and the 24 of Haley have been together this entire race. They sure have. And here comes Haley down to the inside. Going to make a Michael Self bonsai. Can he make it stick? I'm not sure Michael Seffs be able to get on the throttle. He will have the inside when they get to turn one right here. This little kink, this little left-hander. Derek Thorne has got to love watching these guys run side by side and putting that much pressure on each other. Michael Self able to hold off Haley that time. See Eric Holmes right there hanging in there in fourth. David Mayhew, that orange number 17 and fifth. Here comes the Napa car right behind them. Then I'm trying to see, is that Mayhew right back there? Yep, so that those guys still hanging in the picture, close enough to jump if something were to go wrong with these front runners. I think right now Cameron Haley would love to get by that 21 himself. He feels like he's got a better car right now. He doesn't want to allow Derek Thorne, that sixth car, to get away from him. Self had won three consecutive races in this division. I, Kind of wanted to say, is he just waiting back there? But I think once Thorne went by him, he realized that that six car was pretty doggone strong. I think maybe Derek Thorne was waiting. He was showing a lot of patience. Look at that lead he's opened up now. 10, 12 car lengths over Michael Self. I think right now at this stage in the race, Derek Thorne has a lot left. And as we see, oh, here goes John Wood off of the race course. He will get it righted and go back in that direction. Look, here we go, side by side one more time. 21 is on the outside. Here comes Cameron Haley. He's got the pressure on. They come by the flag stand. It's a side by side battle. If Cameron Haley can hang in here, he'll have the inside. He's not able to do it. He is able to, he actually is there. If he can stay on the inside till they get to the top of the right here in turn two, he will have the advantage. Contact! Oh, those guys are banging fenders again, and here comes the 16. Holmes right behind those guys, ready to pounce. Still side by side. Boy, neither one of these guys given an inch. Who Self gets turned sideways. I, I'll tell you, Phil, I gotta believe those couple of times we saw Self on those restarts where you saw a few tire marks, gotta wonder if he didn't wear out one of those rear tires to the point where he just doesn't have as much control in the center of the corners. Yeah, they talked about how critical it was here. Remember, 62 laps on the same set of tires is a long way to go on this road course. Look at Eric Holmes now all over the back of Michael Self. Yeah, not only has Haley gotten by him, but the Napa race car right in the rear view mirror for the number 21 with 10 to go. That hard racing has allowed the 17 of David Mayhew to join this battle also. I just think it's hard for people to realize just how tough this racetrack is on equipment, not just on the tires. Caution on the racetrack, Ray. Oh, yellow has come out once again. Brady Flaherty, the 07 car, is off the racetrack. That brings out a full course yellow. We're gonna have another double foul restart here. So the triple A bright yellow push truck is there to get the zero seven going once again. And guess what? Groundhog day, let's do it again. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about these restarts, Derek Thorne. Now this is the first time he will be restarting from the front. We'll see the green flag when we come back. You're watching the Carneros 200 right here on speed. Hi everybody, Ray Dunlap along with Phil Parsons and Bernadette Santacola getting ready to go back to green. It has been wild each and every time we restart here for the K&M Pro Series West guys. Derek Thorne got a really good jump about seven or eight laps ago. Can Michael Self do anything with him? Green flag is back out, here we go. They're gonna get pressure from Eric Holmes and Cameron Haley still right there. He's gonna make a move past Holmes. Yeah, great restart though by Derek Thorne. Look at him, three wide, but turn one. Holmes is in trouble. Looks like he's losing spots one after another. He is dropping like a rock, Phil. Yeah, you see the 71 of Daryl Hara go by. Jim Engelbright goes by. All these cars going by. Something certainly going wrong with that 16 Napa car. Well, I guess it'll be another heartbreak day for Eric Holmes. Not going to get a trophy at Sonoma today as he continues to fall backwards in the field. See Jim Engelbright, Daryl Hara side by side for a moment at the exit of four. 
Still side by side. Engelbright has the position there. Looked like Daryl Hart got into him just a little bit. And we see the six right there, and Phil, we notice the 21 is ahead of the 24. Haley is back in third. When we took the green flag on this segment, the 21 was in second place. Why is that? Well, we saw the 24 get by the 21 before the caution flag came out, but we revert back to the previous lap if the caution flag comes out, and the 21 of Michael Self was ahead of the 24 of Cameron Haley on the previous lap before the caution flag came out. Okay, so here goes... Michael Self, and he is right ahead of Haley. Looks like these three cars all still right in contention to have a shot to win this today. Yeah, Paul Hiraka right now runs fourth. David Mayhew rounds out the top five. Just five laps to go. It would be a big day for Polly Haraka if he could get up here and make a statement in these final laps. It's going to be a big day for anybody. Remember, no previous winners here at Sonoma in the field. We'll have a first-time Sonoma winner for the K&M Pro Series West. Who will it be? Right now, Derek Thorne looks like he has asserted himself as he made that power move pass on Michael Self about 10 laps ago. And right now, holding position, still about two-car length differential from first to second. Yeah, nobody's been able to challenge Derek Thorne once he got the lead. He did a great job on that restart. He actually chose the outside the first time today. We saw that, but he beat... Michael Self into turn number one. Then he had the inside when they got up to the top of the hill in turn two. Keep in mind, these guys running 64 scheduled laps all on one set of tires. You know, these cars have got to be getting a little bit skatey here at the end. Yeah, and some of these guys pitted maybe a little bit early as we see Paula Haraka get a little bit loose at the exit of turn number 10. But we've had enough caution laps that I think most of these guys would feel pretty secure on fuel. Could be four laps to go here for Derek Thorne. Coming across the start finish line, four to go here at Sonoma. How about Jim Engelbright right there up to the sixth spot? We saw him qualify back. Oh, problems there. A little bit of smoke from, is that the 88 car? That is, that's Dave Smith. Looks like that smoke is dissipated now. We continue rolling on here. Here comes Haley trying to put a little bit of pressure on, wanting to go after that second place spot, pushing pressure on Michael Self in the number 21. Yeah, I think right now that Cameron Haley feels a sense of urgency. He needs to get up there, get by that 21 car of Michael Self to see if he can chase down Derek Thorne. It's going to be hard to do it from third. I think that 24 might be a little bit faster, Phil, but like you said, he's got to get the, got to get the spot before he can have a shot at the win. He really needs to be in position when they get down to turn 11 to make a move to the inside of Michael Self. Right now, he seems to be a little bit too far back. He's about three, four car lengths back. We go short track racing at Colorado National after this, then a combo event at Iowa, then off to Evergreen Speedway. Beautiful racetrack. A real nice, diverse schedule coming up, Phil. Yeah, it certainly is, and a great uh, great comeback for Pauly Haraka here in the series. It's been a while since Pauly's been out here running the West Series, doing a great job running up in the top five, has Michael Self in front of him in the second spot, Cameron Haley in the third spot, and Jim Engelbright right now trails the 17th of Mayhew in sixth. The season is bookended by Phoenix races, and uh, we've seen David Mayhew dominate there at Phoenix earlier this year. Greg Persley went to victory lane, but I think it's worth mentioning Persley right now. It's going to be a tough day for our 2011 champion. Remember that year, Persley dominated this series, won the championship by 260-some points. Yeah, he won six of the first eight races that year in 2011. <laughs> How about Mayhew? Just to the inside of Haraka. Here comes the 17. He'll get the preferred spot. He's going by Haraka, or is he? Well, he's fighting back there. Looks like David Mayhew's going to get that spot. The lead now has opened up to at least four or five car lengths for the number six, so we're keeping an eye on these good battles back here throughout the course of the field. Mayhew now opening it up a little bit on Haraka. Yeah, Jim Engelbright now is trying to chase down Haraka. Here goes Haley to the inside of Michael Self. This is for second place. Here comes Cameron Haley. He'll use the inside line going by the 21. Still has some pretty good forward bite. Give Cameron Haley second spot. Now, can he go get Derek Thorne? He's running out of time. Well, we have a car off the racetrack. It looks like Taylor Cusick in the 42 car 
He's made a lot of contact. Full course yellow, Ray. Wow, look at the tire barriers to the left there, Phil. He has hit hard in that Freightliner of Arizona race car. That thing is used up. Yeah, those tire barriers really cushion a blow, but they normally do a, do a number on the body. You see him just gets a little bit wide, gets his left sides off the racetrack. Nothing he could do there. He's along for the ride. Started to think about trying to correct that thing, but the best effort was to get on the brakes. He did a good job of that, but hard contact to the tire barrier, and it looks like Taylor's day might be over. Yeah, a lot of damage to that Freightliner number 42 car, but that's going to give us overtime ray wow that's a bit of a surprise <laughs> <laughs> gotta make sure these guys have enough fuel no, now that is that's a very interesting point we've had a couple of a uh, couple of green white checkers back to back here we went uh, lebanon i-44 speedway and we're gonna get a red flag here while they check in on that safer barrier and uh, tire wall i think this is a smart move because it's going to take a little bit of time to to repair that damage to the tire wall and if they let these guys continue to run around here under caution for three or four laps while they do it, they could all run out of gas. So with the red flag out, we will reset the field when we come back to wine country. Narrows 200, the race officials have posted the 21 ahead of the 24. So Derek Thorne will restart on whether you call it the inside or the outside, depending on which corner we're going to. But we're ready to go back to green, and here comes Thorne in the Sunrise Ford. He will take the green right ahead of the 21 of Michael Self. A great restart back, Derek Thorne. A huge break for Michael Self. Now he's got the second spot. You see Cameron Haley side-by-side -side with Paul Hiraka for third. Those guys battling side-by-side, -side, and here comes Haley. Looks like he's going to get the spot. Now... The number 17 will put some pressure on Haraka and try to make a move to the inside. That 24 car has great forward bite. We saw him use it right there, but he's got the 21 car in front of him between him and the leader, Derek Thorne. Now, here goes Mayhew to the inside of Haraka for fourth. Now, we saw the 24 pass the 21 right before the caution came out, but apparently they hadn't made it back to the start-finish line by the time the yellow popped up, so that gives Michael Self second position. We'll see if Cameron Haley can do anything about it. Yeah, for the second time, they reverted back to the previous lap. Derek Thorne now a pretty comfortable four-car length lead over Michael Self. You see Michael Self gets a little bit sideways there, but maintains that second spot. Those guys are pitching these race cars around a very technical racetrack. Haley putting pressure on the number 21. Derek Thorne right now hoping to get to the start-finish line before the caution flag comes out because he knows the next flag will end this race. If not, we'll have another green-white checker, but he's just a few car lengths away now from the start-finish line. Here he comes. Will he get the start-finish line for the white flag? It is out for the Sunrise Ford. Can Derek Thorne hang on for 1.99 more miles? Remember, that number 21 has been very, very good in turn 11. He's used that inside right up on the curb. Can he make a pass on Thorne when we get to the last corner? Yeah, and Cameron Haley's awfully good at turn 11 as well, but he needs to get by the 21 in turn 4 or turn 7. Here's some Great side-by-side -side action right there. Ooh, this Daryl Hart gets turned around by Kelly Admiral. Admiral gets uh, pretty aggressive there, and he'll push the 71 off race course. So far, we stay under green. Here comes the number 16 making progress. See, Daryl Hart tries to get his car going again. There's Jim Englebright, the yellow number one car on the inside. You see them at the top of the hill up there. Now they're two or three wide going in turn seven. Lupton in this picture. There's the number 88. These guys all racing hard, but back up front. Here is the distance between Derek Thorne and the number 21 of Michael Self. Can Cameron Haley do anything from third place? It looks like the number 21 is not even going to be in position to challenge in turn number 11. But I'll bet you that 24 car Cameron Haley makes a move to the inside here at 11. You cannot overdrive it for the six. Here comes Haley. Haley's going to slide it in. Oh, he power moves it by the number 21 of Michael Self, he is going to move forward to get second place, but the victory today is going to go to Derek Thorne. He's a first-time winner at Sonoma. What a great race for the second spot there between Cameron Haley and Michael Self, and certainly don't want to diminish the great job that Derek Thorne and Bill Sedgwick and that entire Sunrise 14 did. We need more turn number 11s <laughs> in NASCAR racing. I got to tell you that. Now, Self not very happy with Haley, but it looked to me like a pretty clean move, Phil. Well, it was, and he got to the inside there. Michael Self was trying to use up the racetrack as much as he could, but he did give the 24 car room on the inside. Oh, it'll be fun in victory lane. We're going to hear from Derek Thorne, the winner at Sonoma after this.
So Derek Thorne has decided he's going to be a driver to be reckoned with. Today here at Sonoma Raceway, he picks up his fourth career win in the K&M Pro Series West. Now let's go down to victory lane and hear from he and Bernadette. A suspenseful race with an intense ending here at Sonoma Raceway, but Derek Thorne walks away with the win. <laughs> Derek's second win of the season. What an accomplishment. How's it feel, first win here at Sonoma? Oh, uh, I guess uh, not to be, I'm always, as you know me, I'm always never really a positive guy, but there's a lot of great drivers behind me that have been trying for four or five years to be in this exact spot, and I had to drive around those same drivers to be here. And I feel very, very fortunate. This is my hometown. I got a lot of friends and family here to watch. Uh, these guys deserve every last bit of this. And it's just, it's awesome for me. I never thought in my career in the West Series I'd ever get a road course win being from Circle Tracks. But man, that was a sure, sure was a fun day. And now too, your points battle with Michael Self. You were one point behind. I think you might be ahead now. I think so. I think uh should be about four points ahead, I hope. But man, it's still a lot of racing yet to go. But I just can't be happier for these guys. Come here, Bob. Bob, Bob Roncotti has put together a great team with the six. It's got a lot of history here. Um, and I'm just glad I can bring it home in Victory Circle. All right, we'll let you celebrate with your team. Derek Thorne walks away with his second win on the season. Congratulations to his car owner, Bob Bruncati, and uh, that's always a cool thing to be able to hold the trophy. Here's the final results, Phil. We see Travis Milburn with a great day today. He gets a sixth place run. Holmes will recover for a ninth, but as we page down through, guess what you don't see? Greg Persley yet. He'll be on our next page as we flip over. Persley's going to be posted with a 21st place finish today, and that's going to hurt him in the chase for the championship. One of those days at a track where it just didn't work out. Yeah, it certainly didn't. Some sort of fuel issue for Greg Persley. Tough break, though. Had a good top five car, but uh, it wasn't to be today. What a fantastic move it was as Cameron Haley went by Michael Self. Let's hear from the guy in second. All right, in second place here at Sonoma Raceway. Cameron, you were on the pole. You at least stayed ahead the entire race, but what a battle. Yeah, it was a battle right from the green flag. I mean, I'm Michael, Derek, they, they ran their butts off. Greg there at the beginning ran me hard, and he ran me clean, and all these guys ran me clean, and it was a hard race right from start to finish. There's a lot of cautions out there. There's a lot of dirt anywhere. We even ran, I think it was five laps on an oil down track, so it was pretty chaotic. <laughs> Great road racing experience, too. Yeah, for sure. This Cabinets by Haley uh, Ford Fusion for Gene Price Motorsports was, it was on a rail. It really was. We were saving tires early on. Just didn't save maybe enough till the end. Derek, uh, obviously, I saw him back there. At one point, I saw him as I was coming out of 11. He was just coming in. I'm like, man, I got lots. And then suddenly, he's just saved a little more than I did. And it, it, that's just how it happens. All right. Well, still a great finish here for Cameron Haley in second place. No question about it, Bernadette. Tire management was a big deal today. And as we look at our points, yes, only six races in, but it's a tight battle. And Phil, to me, all the way down to fifth, these guys right in the middle of the hunt. No question about it. Let's hear from our third place finisher. All right, Michael Self here in third place. Michael, I know you wanted your fourth straight win, but still, it was a great battle and a good finish. Yeah, we're happy. Uh, a good point today, you know. It's just it's frustrating when you lead the majority of the race. Um, I, I think I just used the car up a little bit too much. I mean, something happened. We got oil all over the side of the car and the inside. But the, the Golden Gate Racing team did another good job. They put together another winning car, so maybe just could have conserved a little more. I know it's early still in the season, but how intense is that battle for the championship between Derek Thorne and you? Uh, you know, this was going to be, I was hoping this was going to be a huge point race where maybe I could separate a little from these guys. But, you know, him winning this one, that's that's huge for him. Uh, awesome job of Derek, you know. He told me after Brainerd out, uh, Brainerd, he finished second. He told me that was the closest he was ever going to come to win a road course. So I think uh, he changed me or, or something. But it's going to be a good run the rest of the year. Uh, we know where our strong points are, and we know where his strong points are. So hopefully we, we can just go capitalize. All right. He didn't go for the fourth straight, but still a great finish from Michael Self. And Burton and Deb, from the looks of things, we're going to have a great points battle all the way through the end of the season. Next racing action for the K&M Pro Series East on Speed will be Thursday, July 25th. Hope you can join us for that. It was a beautiful day today here in Sonoma for the Carneros 200. Tough day for Greg Persley. He takes a little bit of a hit in the points, but keep in mind it is a long season. They were slipping, they were sliding, they were all over the racetrack today. But in the end, it was a first-time winner. Derek Thorne gets his fourth career win in the K&M Pro Series West. For Phil and Bernadette, I'm Ray saying so long from Napa.